I've come up to Dartmoor today just to do a bit of photography um, and just film a quick video of the outside of the van. I wasn't actually going to bother doing one just yet. Um, I've only really done the interior of the van, kind of finished most of that, but I haven't actually done much work to the outside. Um, I filmed a van tour, or interior tour anyway, whilst I was in Scotland. I'm just going to join this video on uh, to the front of it. Um, I've actually got the van booked in for the work to be done now, so uh, I thought I'd just take a, a quick clip of the van just to see what it looks like. Um, I bought it um, in November, so we're talking about seven months ago. I done, did most of the inter interior conversion within, say, two two months, but I've not actually uh, started it outside yet. The only thing I've done is um, fitted these wind deflectors. Um, it's got no air conditioning, which is a right bummer. So um, at least with these, you can drive along with the windows about a third way down and um, you don't get that annoying kind of internal um, Kind of wind vibrations or variations in the van so um, definitely recommend these these are actually from a company called dubflector and um, yeah really happy with them work really well uh, yeah the van is a uh, 2004 i think <laughs> um, t5 short wheelbase um, it's the most basic model you can get it's only 84 horsepower so it's pretty slow uh, it needs quite a lot of work doing to it, as you can see. Still on steel wheels as well. Quite a lot of dents and scratches. It's actually booked in the body shop um, next month um, to get dead fixed different bumper gun and I'm putting a caravel bumper on the front of it so um, that should look a lot better when that's done it wouldn't look so much like a commercial van um, just general repairs on it really uh, most of the arches have some form of rust and this is probably the best one the arch front ones need a bit of work just general kind of van maintenance really I've not actually washed it since I came back from Scotland, or saying that since I went away to Scotland. So it's um, it's actually done about, but it's had a trip to Kent and back after that. So it's done about 4,000 miles now, so without a wash. So if anyone's worried about getting a white van, don't worry too much. They uh, don't show the dirt like everyone seems to think they do. It still looks pretty white, so um, not too bad. I'm going to be doing this up over the next few months. Um, hopefully get most of it done for go to to the Alps in Italy in um, end of September. So um, hopefully get it done, doing the, the standard kind of thing with a spoiler and um, just fixing the dents and uh, just making it look a bit more modern, really. Right, I thought I'd do uh, a bit of a tour of the inside of the van. Um, T5, Volkswagen T5 camper van. I bought it in November. I converted most of it by... Um, January, uh, February. Uh, it didn't take too long. Um, when I bought the van, it had been lined and uh, had the windows fitted um, and had the um, the ceiling lights put in. Uh, apart from that, nothing else had been done to it. Um, put the kitchen in, uh, the rock and roll bed, uh, overhead storage units, um, Smev sink. It's a nine triple two. Um, it been the floor had been done as well that's the other thing before i bought it uh everything else here i've done i've done all the electrics um got three socket points down here uh i've got a the left one's off uh, an inverter um i've got a 12 volt socket here and this one's 240 mains off um the hook up at the back um three switches or four switches sorry we have lights uh blue lights this one's just a volt gauge um and we have this one, which is the um, pull box under here, which is under this flap, which show up. I'll show you in a bit. Um, also have two USB points. We have a one amp and a 2.1 amp, so uh, you can charge phones and uh, camera batteries and any other kind of thing, really, when you're on the go. Um, this is meant to be a kind of drinks holder. Um, I've still used the, the bar to um, clip a few uh, cups on and stuff. It's mainly just got books on it. Um, this bottom shelf is 
got these jars which uh, I got from Asda, which uh, are brilliant because they um, they just fit and they don't slide around too much. Um, you got tea bags, milk, sugars, salts, various other things, bottle openers. This top shelf generally just gets used for wires, charging stuff, um, various things like that. Uh, the table rail, uh, I put that on last month. Um, it's ideal having a table here when um, you're kind of working away and it when you've got the laptop with you, uh, you can get on with a lot of stuff. Uh, beach worktop, um, I fitted this uh, about a month after doing the unit. Um, I wanted something that kind of looked a bit different, not just the MDF top. Um, I went and bought this, it wasn't very expensive. Um, and it was an absolutely nightmare to fit because I fitted it on top of the original worktop. I had to um, actually route out all the all underneath of it, um, take about half an inch off to, to get it to cover the overlap. Um, I'm really happy about it's come out, um, but it was a bit of a pain, to be honest. Um, got three cupboards down here. Cupboards down here. You probably can't see them very well. Um, the one on the left is um, the inverter. Um, you've also got. Uh, all the 12 volt stuff in there so I've got a fuse box you got all, everything to do with um, the leisure battery in there um, fuses for all these points um, and in, obviously the inverters down there as well there is a shelf above it as well which is just generally stored for food and cooking items um, I have the uh, 100 amp um, AGM leisure battery under the seat uh, you can generally take AGM batteries down to about 50% of their charge um, regularly without damaging them so I get about 50 amps worth of power in that one. Um, it charges off a split charge relay off the battery. Uh, the, the good thing when I bought the van is he had a subwoofer in the back so he already had the power supply in the back and uh, a trigger circuit off the radio to feed the, um, the split charge. So basically whenever you're driving the van and you have the radio on it, it, it switches the split charge on and it will um, charge the battery from that. Um, Next one, this one is just basically wastewater and um, drinking water, or say water supply. Um, and then we have just the space up the top to store bottles, various things you want to get to easily. Um, I've got some whiskies, I'm in Scotland. Um, fire extinguisher here. Um, if you know what my cooking is like, you'll see you need it. Um, the one on the, the right is the gas bottle, general storage cooking items again, things like that. Uh, the Smev units are really good. It's like say this is a 9222. You've got two rings on the left and under here you have uh, just electric tap, um, hot and cold. Uh, it's only obviously cold in here. It's uh, not big enough to have proper hot water. You can store generally stuff in there that you're not using as well. Sometimes I have a kettle in here, sometimes I just have um, things I cook with. This thing, thing in here is really great. It's a, it's a three litre uh, saucepan, I suppose you call it. Um, but it actually folds really flat. It's made of silicon and uh, stainless steel. And um, you can get, like I say, you can cook a lot of stuff in that. It's really great. It stores quite easily when uh, you need more space. Most of the time it just, uh, just kind of stays in there. Um, again, this one's like, just be able to put stuff in there really out of the way. The last one is basically gas. Um, I've got a camping gas cylinder there. Uh, you get colour gas really easy in England, but we're going to use uh, the van uh, abroad. We've got a trip later on uh, to Italy and um, the Alps. And if you have colour, you can't get it in Europe. Camping gas you can get, say, all over Europe, and there are a few places you can get it in England. and. Luckily, there's a place about five miles away from me which you can get it in. So uh, I went for a camping gas one in the end. There's swi slightly smaller um, canisters as well, so you can actually fit them in uh, kind of a, a smaller space, really, which gives me room to store other stuff in there with it. So I've got food and cooking stuff and various other things in this cupboard uh, as well. Um, next one, I'll say this is just the electric or um, well, the cool box. Uh, I was tempted to put a a Waco compressor fridge in, uh, but I just couldn't afford it really. It's the, pr it's the price of them, really. They're around about 300 to 400 pounds. The next thing I was looking at was a freeway fridge, which is uh, gas, 12 volt electric, and mains. 
they work really well actually but um it's this it's a space problem with them they're quite big units and um more of a chest kind of style fridge size and they just won't fit in the van very well what i went for in the end was this um it's a cool box from halford i was looking at waco cool boxes uh, which seemed better in some regards you could you could turn them down at night so they ran a bit quieter uh, but the halfords gave really good reviews on how cold they get to what i've done is i've I put it in here and I fitted all around it uh, 50 mil Celitex house insulation and, and then I've actually filled around it with expanding foam and kind of boxed it all in so it's absolutely solidly in there and it just adds uh, quite a lot of insulation and um, probably a couple of inches either side release it just makes it really efficient if you get frozen stuff in there it, it does last for days uh, like I say it runs off electric it's 12 volts it does draw four amps so um it will eventually flatten the battery, unfortunately, but um, you can, like I say, normally have it on for most of the day with, without any big issues. Uh, I've also got some extractor fans I put in the back, which just take the heat out because um, it's quite well, well sealed at the front, which is quite nice because it keeps the, the noise down if you leave it switched on at night. Uh, but obviously it gets very hot in there, so um, it kind of just takes the heat out from that, really. Uh, next thing. Right, this is the bed I put in. Um, it's a rock and roll bed. Came from, I think it's RS um, Customs in Wales. Really happy with it. Um, actually, when I did the kitchen, uh, I took this base bit into um, into B and Q, and I actually got them to match the paint with this onto onto the doors. Uh, so it's kind of the same colour. I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, wasn't cheap but it's so easy to use and um, it just makes so much sense. It, it, I mean, a lot of T5 conversions have these beds in and they're common everywhere really. But if you're thinking about it, definitely maybe worth saving the money and getting one. They're so easy to use. Uh, it's a free quarter bed. Um, so it's perfectly capable of having two adults on it fine. Um, it's reasonably comfortable. I have actually got a, a three inch mattress topper because uh, at home, I have a memory foam mattress and uh, it's, it's just a bit too hard really so I have the topper on it and it's really comfortable at night to be honest it's um, it's great it's so easy to use uh, um, all you have to do is literally pull the handle uh, it do, it's not on rollers this one so you do have to lift it but it's quite good because you can also lift it to get to the storage so you can actually lift it like that and it will actually go all the way back apart from it it kind of does hit the back of the van but you can easily get storage out so I've got a um, an awning there and a porta potty which I've not actually used yet I've had it a few months most of the time you don't really need them um, and just kind of various things from there but once it's lifted up all you do is you pull it forward and it just that's your bed it's as simple as that really so uh, and put it up it's um, a bit more of a hassle you've got to grab the um, the back of it I'm not just pulled up to a, a graveyard by the way, I'm actually parked by a beach, it's just um, for some reason on the Isle of uh, Lewis they have a lot of beaches with graveyards next to them. Um, like I say, pulling it up, it's just a matter of pulling it like that and then pushing it back into place. So uh, it's as easy as that really, it takes two minutes, the worst bit is actually getting the, uh, the bedding out and putting it on it, so um, definitely recommend this. Um, if you're thinking about having a bed in it opposed to a fixed one obviously a fixed one's going to be a lot cheaper but um, this just gives you a lot more flexibility if I was to have a fixed bed I'd definitely be looking at a long wheelbase van this one's only a short wheelbase um, you still get loads of room with um, with this up so it's not too bad at all um, that's basically it really I'll show you around the back in a minute but uh, you've got other things included I mean the curtains are another thing um, definitely still a set of curtains these are custom made ones not custom made but there I'll just turn you around these are ones that are kind of designed to fit straight into the, the recesses of the T5 um, or not the recesses fit kind of the rough space you actually get runners with them um, and they're so easy to close I mean you literally undo them this one does catch some of the stuff I store up here so it's not the best one to show you but they literally just close like that and they're so good at night or well, during the day 
you, you cannot see any light through them. They're absolutely pitch black. They're really good. Um, and they're not that thick material actually, but they're a lot better than the ones I have at home, which uh, don't block any light. Two essential books here if you're a, a photographer. You've got the Bird Atlas, um, or the Bird Guide, shall I say. And landscape photographer, what's that tree? Uh, it's not in landscape photography, you end up taking a picture of lots of trees, and um, I don't have a clue what half of them are apart from maybe an oak tree. Um, it's nice when you put the pictures up to be able to say what trees in it. So, um, these kind of books are only a few pounds. This is an RSPB one, and um, this one's a Collins one. So, uh, a nice thing to have if you uh, just want to have a look. I have um, up here I have a camper van cookbook which is absolutely great, I got that as a present. Um, uh, nice sign here and a book on photography from National Geographic which is also, also a present which is quite nice. I think this is all the pictures on Instagram, all the top pictures on Instagram. And um, yeah, I'll show you in the back now. Well, it's a bit noisy out here because it's uh, quite windy uh, by the beach. Uh, just to prove I'm not just in a, by a graveyard. But um, right, this is the back of the van. Um, fortunately I'm parked on a slope with the back the van up the top so it's actually a lot shorter than it normally you normally stand up under here quite fine um, but the back of the van I've got this free switch panel here um, one of them does this light on the back of the tailgate uh, which is brilliant at night because you can just light up the whole um, whole of the van behind you uh, if you're trying to find something or just need light um, that was a spare one at the moment, I've not got anything plugged into it. This one's an actual spare off um, the electric pump for the tap. Um, this is to do with the shower down here, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, lots of storage under the back seat. Uh, you can get down there they kind of quite well. Um, most of the time you just pull stuff out from the back. So uh, I've got this kind of wire type cage thing here, which I'm going to replace, but um, just got basically hook up cables, uh, got rugby ball in there. Uh, first aid, uh, various other things. Got a, an outside um, kind of gas stove here. This is just um, kind of a water container. It will just fit through the gap in the cupboard at the front to fill up the um, 15 litre one. So I never have to take it out. It kind of 15 litre one just kind of sits there. Um, this one's 10 litres, so I can carry about 25 litres on, on board all the time. So it's not too bad. I don't really drink the water out of the. Um, on the tap, which is used it to cook with and uh, wash with, so it, it lasts quite a long time. The only thing that really drains it is, is the shower. Um, the shower's underneath here, uh, it's, flat. it's a bullfinch shower, they're not expensive. Really good, uh, you know, alternative if you uh, can't fit a shower in your van. They are meant to go on the outside of the vans, uh, you're meant to cut a hole for the steel, but uh, I didn't fancy that, so I fit it here. All you do is you lift it up. Um, and then you get the kind of the shower head which is in here. Uh, try and do this one out. And then you uh, literally just clip it in place. And that's it. Um, you've got hot to cold. I've only got it fed into um, just one supply. Because um, if you had hot, obviously you need two tanks. So basically... I just use it as a kind of regulator. The more you go into the hot, uh, the slower the water flow will come out. So it's quite good to uh, reduce the flow if you need to. You can buy um, valves that will detect the release of the pressure because this actually, when you take it out, there's a valve in there that blocks the flow so you don't get any more water coming out. So if I switch, I switch on the switch now, you can see there's no water coming out at all. So these won't leak, even under pressure, they do have valves in them. You can get a switch which you put in the pipe which will detect the pressure relief when you plug this in and will automatically switch it on for you but I went for a, a lot more simpler approach with um, with the switch. Basically if you uh, plug this in, I'm not sure if this is going to work now because I've actually uh, run out of water in the van but you might be able to see, there you go, you've got a bit of water coming up. It's not massively powerful but um, it's enough to have a, a semi-decent shower when you're in a van anyway. So 
so that's that. Um, this cupboard under here is just generally for storage of random things. Um, it's got the water pipe in here, which tees off the same um, pipe which goes to the tap. That just does the shower. It's as simple as that. Really, there's nothing more advanced than that. The the uh, the hot one I've actually had to cap off because I think this will leak out the hot tap, the, the hot side if you don't cap it off. These are meant to fit um, quick fit connectors. I can't remember the size, uh, but all I've done is I've just put some pipe on with uh, some tube glue clips, and it's it's absolutely fine. In here's the fuse box for the um, the 240 hookup. It's an RCE D1, which means it's really sensitive. It will trip if you run. A bit like the one in your house really so it's, it's all safe and that and the hookup is down here under the van it's just quite easy to fit really all you do is you um i think you take this light off one of these covers and um you can actually run it through a grommet in the back kind of draw it an angle and come straight out into the into the box it only took me about an hour to fit that so it's all pretty good um this is my table up here that's where it stores it's the easiest thing ever to, to fit i didn't buy any special kit to fit it all i did is i bought the only thing i bought that was i kind of made for i suppose these two brackets i can't remember the size it might be 20 mil i might just be making that up I bought a bit of pipe off ebay which cost me about a pound and um and it just basically clips on here as it does in, in the van uh, in the front and then by undoing these kind of things here, the table swings down and then that's as, it's as simple as that really. I did put one of these latches here, um, just so when you first undo it, it doesn't come down and kind of knock you out, but um, you don't really need it. These are just basically conduit brackets. Uh, for electrical conduit, they're not expensive. And again, I've got the um, the uh, sliding, sliding curtains here. That's it basically. Um, next step is to do all the, the work outside. Really, it's uh, needs a lot of uh, body work to it, but um, we'll get there eventually. But I hope you found it um, useful. And uh, if you're thinking of converting one or buying one to convert, just uh, go ahead. It's not as bad as you think. It just uh, it's just time consuming really you don't need any skills i'm not a i'm not in the tra a trade or anything i'm not a electrician or a plumber or a carpenter or anything and it's um yeah i managed to do it pretty enough if you can do diy and um you just got the time and you can take it slowly really uh it shouldn't be an issue doing it all right hope you found this useful and um